Hello, and welcome to Stage Makeup with Kyla. This is the second one that I'm filming ever. Still working on my film techniques. The last one I brought to you was facial hair, and now, animal. The animal I'm gonna do is a koala. Here's why. I'm showing you a few different techniques with it, how to model fur, how to model fields of color, and a koala is an animal. Well, first of all, cute. Look how cute they are. So sweet. Furry. Look huggable, but really they're ferocious. The other reason why I'm demonstrating a koala is it can be done with the Ben Nye makeup kit. You only need two cream colors to make yourself look like a koala, black and white. You're welcome to experiment with any kind of animal in the world. You're welcome to incorporate other makeups that you might have, drugstore makeups, higher quality makeups, lower quality makeups, acrylic paint, anything that you can put on your face to make your face look more like an animal, you're welcome to use. But I'm only asking you to use whatever came with the kit. If you have the Kryolan kit, you don't have black and white, but you have ranges of browns and beiges. So maybe be a coyote or a wombat or a kangaroo or a wolf or an animal that is a range of browns and beiges. Use your imagination and you're welcome to transform your face into any kind of animal you imagine. And that's the idea here. Where you using the human face as a canvas for animal features. This is something that's often done in children's theater, or you may have heard of this musical Cats. I'm gonna show you koala. So to start, I'm gonna imagine where's the outline of the nose. So I know my human nose is here. Actually, let me back up. To start, get your hair out of your face. Mine's already out of my face because this is the second makeup I've done today, but get your hair out of your way. And put a layer of toner to close up your pores so that these cream makeups don't sink into your pores. And then, for your base color, imagine what's the base of most of your animal's face. Look closely at your research and how you've interpreted that research onto your schematic where you've drawn the animal's face over your face. It might not exactly line up. The animal's nose might not be where your nose is. The animal's eyes might not be where your eyes are. In the case of the koala, the nose is gonna cover up the human nose. So it's gonna be an oval about here covering up the whole human nose. And the base of the fur is mostly white and gray. So I'm gonna use white cream color as a base and cover most of my face. However, I'm not gonna put white over the nose because I know I want the nose to be solid black. It's easier to make it look solid black from putting black right onto my skin rather than putting black on top of white. Does that make sense? There's no human audience. I don't know if it makes sense to you. So I'm gonna start with a fresh, <laughs> I'm using a makeup remover wipe and I'm wiping off everything that I've blended in the past few makeups to get a stark white from the cream color. Using a makeup sponge to put a layer of white as my base over my eyes, over my forehead. You might find that it's more difficult to get a smooth layer when you're really contrasting your skin, especially if you're going lighter and you have a darker skin tone. What you might wanna do is put one layer, then put a layer of translucent powder, then put another layer. Or skip the translucent powder, put one layer and then put another layer. So I'm avoiding the area of the nose and approximating too. I'm going to draw that outline really cleanly in a minute. I'm using a latex sponge to put the base. If you feel that you're more proficient with a brush, go forth. Putting the base everywhere that I plan to put color. Mm -hmm. Including over the lips. If you want your animal makeup to proceed onto the neck, you can. You don't have to. And for real world applications, consider what is the costume. Does the costume cover up the neck? And if not, how realistic or how much of the audience's suspension of disbelief do you want to call upon? Should the neck look furry if the face is furry? Or are we accepting the convention that we know it's an animal? 
or we know it's a human in animal makeup. So my skin was pretty fair to begin with when I started putting this white on top. I am going to put another layer to cover up the pinkness of my skin, but I'm not going to put a layer of powder because I feel like I'm pretty much covered. It seems to me, like, it looks like it's pretty much covered. So using a lot of brush strokes to eliminate a streaky look. I don't want it to look streaky, I want it to look smooth. A note to make up class, this is one deviation from the original syllabus. Originally we had decided that this project would be an opportunity to practice putting makeup on someone else, which is a slightly different skill than putting makeup on yourself. But now, March of 2020, the way the world is, uh, with a pandemic, let's avoid touching each other as much as possible. Let's avoid practicing putting makeup on someone else. Just practice putting makeup on yourself. And still with that, wash your hands, wash your face, wash your makeup. <laughs> Looks pretty scary. Looks pretty smooth. Your, and again, your base color depends on what your animal is. So for the koala, the next one I'm going to use is from this Ben Nye Cream Wheel, where it has two shades of pink, a brown, and a black. I'm going to use the black. I'm going to use a half inch acrylic paintbrush, just like the Ben Nye brush that came with the kit, or the Kryolan brush that came with the kit, or a cheap acrylic paintbrush from Michaels. I'm going to start by tracing the outline of the nose. So I'm pressing the brush into the makeup, then I'm going to use the sharp side of the brush to draw the outline of the nose. A koala's nose is big and oval shaped. Big, I mean relative to the rest of their face. You could also use a pencil to draw the outline if you find that to be easier. I think it might have been easier in this case, but here we are. Both the Ben Nye and the Kryolan kits come with a brown and a black pencil. Maybe I'll use a combination. So right here, where I'm trying to avoid the planes of my face. Oh, yeah. I was having a difficult time trying to make that smooth. I think I kind of got there. Let's smooth this out. Pretty smooth. Now that I've got the outline, I'm going to fill it in. And you'll see how this pretty much obstructs, at least from the front. In profile, you'll still see that I'm a human with the nose. But from the front, it creates the illusion that I'm not a human with a nose, that I'm an animal. So yeah, wash your face thoroughly, wash your hands thoroughly, wash your brushes thoroughly. I was just thinking about that as this brush went kind of into my nose. Definitely going to wash it with antibacterial soap and brush cleaner after this. It looks like I need to work on symmetry. It looks like this side is kind of diagonal and this side is more oval. So I'm going to go back with the pencil 
and try and make this side match that side. There it is, big oval koala nose. Next, I'm gonna draw the eyeballs. So koalas have these very cute, beady little eyes. Aww. I'm gonna use the pencil to draw the shape of the eye over my eyelid. When my eyes are open, it's hard to create a complete illusion that I'm a koala because I still have human eyes on my face. So I've drawn that with the pencil. I'm gonna go back in with the black cream color and fill it in. When my eyes are closed, the emphasis is on where the eyes are drawn. Um, and from stage, what you're going to see is like, you're never going to be able to completely suspend disbelief, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> but you can give the indication of being a non-human creature. So, outlining the shape of the eye. If you're a lizard, maybe your eyes are on the side of your temples. It takes practice and it takes experimenting. And I think it takes a mix of using the cream color on a brush whoop, and using a pencil. <laughs> That's a good example. This went way too far. Do I have cotton balls or Q-tips handy? Of course not. I have a makeup wipe. I'm gonna go back and rebase. Re-add the base there. Everything is fixable. <laughs> With makeup, at least. And everything takes lots of practice, too. Yeah, beauty little koala eyes. All right. Next up, fur. So pay attention to the fur patterns. Look at your research images. How is the fur growing over that animal's face? Or does that animal have feathers or scales, in which case you want to practice a different texture? So for the koala, they have pale white fur that is short, close around their eyes, and then gray fur growing beyond that. So to simulate fur with the brush, and because it's gray, that's why I did a white base and I'm doing black on top of it. I'm going to do a bunch of little flecks with the brush. When I go to do captions, how am I going to do sound effects? I'll figure it out. So instead of letting this be smoothly blended, I'm using like an impressionism technique where I'm keeping the brush strokes in place. So some of them are darker black, some of them become more gray, and they're going in the direction that the hair is growing, fur, that the fur is growing. It stays pale white next to the nose. Koalas, it's good to get a bunch of research of a bunch of different animals, looking at them from different like front and profile, Often the koala has a little beard, so I'm going to try and emulate that. So fur is a lot of little brush strokes. Yeah, koala beard!
And then to make my oval human face look more like the round koala face, I'm concentrating the fur onto the bottom of my cheekbone. Yeah, rounded. So there's the outlines of where I want the fur to be. Then I'm gonna go back and fill it in. And here, maybe the brush goes in different directions, down and up. Depending on how dense or how thick the fur is, if you're doing a creature that has long fur, make these brush strokes longer. If it's shorter, make them smaller and closer together. I like being a koala. Continuing up onto the forehead. Looking at those patterns of fur. Mixing the black into the white to make gray at some points. At some points, darker black. Ending on the hairline. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's looking very quality. And then, similar on the other side. So that small white fur stays next to the nose surrounding the eye Paying attention to the direction in which the hair is growing. Avoiding too much blur. I got a little too blurry there. <laughs> Maybe the koala took a nap and their fur was matted. animal that you choose could be as challenging or as within your skill set as you want to challenge yourself to. If you've never done an animal before, it's a, of course it's going to be challenging. If you want to attempt an animal that has lots of different details and colors, it's going to be more challenging. If you want to do an animal that's just black and white with a few different textures, like a koala, you might get done that quickly. I might go back actually, now that I look at it, and I want more gray fur, more of these in-between tones, so I'm going to keep going with the fur brush strokes to add more gray. So it's not just some black and some white, but a lot of gray furs in there. A lot of little brush strokes. Yeah, that helped already. All right, so double checking my schematic. <laughs> my plan was the nose, the eyes, the little beard. Especially when I'm facing the camera straight on, you can't see my nose at all. The profile, of course, there it is really revealed. Yeah. And then if you're going to go on, on stage, set it with translucent powder. I'm not gonna go on stage right now. I'm gonna take a picture like this and wash it off and move on to the next makeup. So there's some techniques for getting complete opacity of color, for getting fur texture, for paying attention to the animal and how the animal's face interacts with your face. Another idea, if you want to incorporate your costume with your animal or maybe your hair, I'm doing this mostly because I think it's fun. So it's optional for you. You know, koalas have two fluffy ears. <laughs> This would look more realistic if I had koala colored hair. <laughs> but if you have, maybe you have, if you're doing a cat or a mouse and you have little cat or mouse ears you wanna add. All right, I'm a koala. <laughs>